Hi everyone, welcome to Raw Online. I'm Dr. Abhinaya. I'm a consultant pediatrician. In Nelson based pediatric teaching, the topic of discussion now is on autism spectrum disorder. So this is going to be a comprehensive presentation wherein I'm going to start with the history or uh, let's say the timeline of autism spectrum disorders and right now what is the criteria that applies for the diagnosis of ASD and how do we go about the management okay so let's get started so this gentleman over here he was a famous renowned psychiatrist he was none other than Eugene Bloiler so he gave the term or he used the term rather autism in year 1908 so way back in the year 1908 he was the one who first introduced the word autism but when he introduced it was not for a kid for a child but he described it on a schizophrenic patient whom he felt who had withdrawn from the world or from the outside world so he was aloof he was into self so that was the first description of autism more than 100 years ago so what does the term autism means so this is derived from greek so the greek word autos means self and the word autism was used by bloiler to denote a person who was withdrawn within self or who was uh, who had what he felt uh, was uh, a morbid self admiration so autism spectrum disorder we all know it is a neurobiological disorder and as pediatricians we are really interested in it because the onset is early childhood so by early childhood i mean it is uh, even during the late part of infancy and we tend to screen these children around 16 to 18 months and then we come to a diagnosis so the earlier the diagnosis more favorable the prognosis and the initiation of treatment having said that there is no specific biomarker you cannot do a blood investigation or you cannot do any other neuroimaging and tell that yes the child has asd it is a neurobiological disorder which to meet certain specific criteria for the diagnosis and uh, ASD arises from an atypical brain development and we have seen so many uh, children with I believe you have also seen so many children with autism spectrum disorder and uh, so many signs and symptoms that the parents come with. So the accurate diagnosis however to make an accurate diagnosis you need a very very careful review of the history nowadays parents are really aware and uh, uh, very tech savvy parents wherein they read so much on the net and uh, they watch so many videos and uh, usually parents come up uh, and tell the doctor I uh, suspect or I, I am scared uh, maybe my child has uh, autism or my child falls into this ASD category so we have to carefully review the history sometimes they give all the history pointers the parents come up with those history pointers which are all favorable for ASD but then they do not tell what points which are not important what they feel is not important but you have to give the objective or the lead questions and point towards the correct diagnosis what we want is a correct diagnosis okay and after the history taking is over a direct observation of the child's behavior is very very important and uh, so we will see how to go about these all the sad point is that over the last hundred years the uh, incidence of ASD uh, is increasing. So this was uh, CDC's report. Latest CDC report is uh, the prevalence is 1 in 36. Uh, whereas this is 1 in 44. I think this is some uh, few years ago. But as per CDC 2024, the prevalence is very high. 1 in 36 is very high. So this is a worldwide prevalence. And uh, ASD is also common in boys when compared to girls. Girls with ASD tend to have a lower IQ and they have more cognitive impairment and fewer stereotypes. This is something which is peculiar for girls who are affected with ASD.